Good morning, this is Ty Warner with Kisoft USA. <clears throat> Today I want to talk to you about cross-axis gear pairs. Um, one of the great things about our software is we can do a lot of different um, gear designs. Uh, and one of them is cross-axis gearing. In this particular example, I'm going to create a gear pair out of uh, using plastic uh, worm and worm gear. Uh, we have a few, we have some information about what we need to design to. We know that the, sh the, uh, the worm itself will be pressed onto a small DC motor shaft that's two millimeters in diameter. We also know that the, uh, the worm will be a POM material and the worm gear a nylon material. The client has asked for efficiencies of greater than 53 percent and we need to have output speeds uh, of 140 RPM with torques at 110 millinewton meters. We're given the DC motor uh, torque and speed at the rated load, and we have a service life application factor and center distance defined for us. So what I would normally do here is I would try and get a rough idea of the ratios I maybe need to get my uh, torque. So what I do is I take that 110 millinewton meters of torque, divided by the motor torque, which is 3.5, and I get a 31.42 ratio. However, um, we only have a 53% efficient mesh at the minimum. So if I divide that by 0.53, it gives me a 59.29 ratio. And so what we're going to do is we are going to use uh, some information on how we plug this in into our software. So. We start out, <clears throat> we grab the cross helical gears and precision mechanic worm module, double click here, and we end up with this, uh, this page, it automatically gives you a, a one millimeter module. Uh, we know that we, we wanted a 59 to one, I'm going to go 60 to one to start with. Uh, I also know that I need a 35.2 millimeter center distance. I'm going to keep this box checked. I'm going to hold that constant. I can now size the face width. I don't think six is going to be enough, but uh, we'll let that stand for now. I'm going to size the helix angle. It'll be this 84.32 right here. And then I'm also going to go into, um, I'm going to set my materials right away too. Um, I'm going to use a VDI 2545 calculation method to rate these, so I'm going to grab the POM and the nylon um, VDI 20, 2545 materials right here in our database. I would expect this to be grease lubrication because it's a plastic gear set. Uh, they're small gears. This would be like for maybe an automotive actuator. I'm going to go ahead to my rating now. I'm going to change my rating method to this plastic VDI 2545 modified YF method C. I'm going to put in my gear information 50 hours at 9000 RPM for my input and 3.5 millinewton meters an application of 1.25 for an application factor. Now when I go back here I can change my flame temperature to 80. And I'm just putting it on there because it'll be a little bit warmer than the root. <clears throat> my reference profile for a worm and helical gear design, uh, typically I want to see a little bit higher contact ratio, so I'm going to go with a deep tooth form to start with. You can set this to whatever you want. Uh, this is just my preference to start with uh, on a design. And I'm going to grab this deep tooth form right here the first one, 1 1.4, um, which is our dedendum coefficient. And now I'm ready to solve this uh, first guess run at my gear design. Well, it says the face width is too small, but we thought maybe that would be the case. Uh, it's telling me the measurement of my rolls is smaller than a tip circle. But I have a, um, a design as you can see, my design that comes out here, uh, I have a 
47.79% efficiency. Incidentally, I want to probably have that two millimeter hole applied here on my worm for the inner diameter. And the reason I uh, apply that is so I can take into account rim thickness. I'm going to resize this, 19.7. I'm going to recalculate. Now it's just telling me my measurement over my rollers is, is not correct. So what I would do is go to my tolerances. I'm going to check this and put my own information in here. I'm just going to bump this to 1.9 for both. And then I'm going to run this again. Now I have no warnings. <clears throat> but incidentally, my efficiency is low, uh, even at 1 to 60, which is a little bit higher than uh, 59 tooth, which we calculated. If I look at my report, my output torque is only 100 newton millimeters. Hmm. So we got to change this. Uh, <clears throat> I go to fine sizing now, and I put in some information. I'm gonna keep that at a thousand. I'm gonna bump. I'm gonna keep that at 60 plus or minus five percent on my ratio. But I am gonna make some changes here. I'm gonna go to 0.8. I'm going to look at different modules, 0.8 to 2. I'm going to look at a 0 0.05 step. I'm going to look at different angles here, 14.5 and 20 degrees. I only want to look at those two, so I do one step, 5.5 degrees. On my helix angle, I'm going to go from 80 to 87, and I'm going to look at that at 0.1 increments. I'm not going to change my center distance. I'm not going to change uh, my profile shift for my worm gear or for my worm. I'm not going to change my worm gear uh, profile shift. I am going to turn this off right here because I know I'm only going to do a one start worm. Conditions two, I'm going to suspend results which do not repeat my required safety factors and then I'm going to calculate. Okay. And you can see the progress of the calculation. And it might take a moment or two for your results to compile. Okay, we have results. Uh, that took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take, but, but we've got results. So that's good. So let's go ahead and look at our fine sizing. I'm going to just turn that off. I'm going to turn my fine size, and here we go. All right. So we have results. We have pressure angle, and here's the thing with our results is we have all these columns, and you can decide which columns you want to look at. You right-click, show hide columns, and I'm going to turn all these off, and then I'm just going to grab the ones that are relevant to me. And if you hover over here, it'll tell you what it is. Um, the outside diameters and the root diameter is important. Total ratio, I think, is important. Um, my root safety, flank safety, and my efficiency. That's efficiency right there. All right. I hit OK, and you can see now I can kind of look at what I have. In my graphics, I can um, use this as a way of measuring what I have. Maybe I look at my root diameter. Oh, my root diameter here of gear one, which is my worm. And uh, maybe I look at my, let's see, my ratio. Let's see, root diameter and ratio. And maybe for my other one, I look at my, uh, total efficiency. There we go. So I'm going to be somewhere over here in this range. I know I need at least a 59 because I calculated that at 53%. So I'm going to probably be up in this range if I zoom in uh, in this range here. The other thing I can do is I can go to my results and I can sort my results Right, like this, and I can get down to that 53 range pretty easily, 
and I can look at my root diameters. Now, remember my root diameter, I have a two millimeter hole through that thing, and I'm gonna probably need to make sure that I have a high enough root diameter, a uh, large enough root diameter that my, my worm doesn't split when I press on the um, shaft to the motor. So I'm going to be looking at this root diameter as well and this ratio, um, which is 1 to 59. looks like 59 is what we calculated at 55% works pretty good. We have our tip diameter, so if you have a, a space constraint, you can look at tip diameters. But I have a root diameter constraint, and this is what I'm going to look at here. 55.335. Five point nine. Um, let's accept this. I'm not going to close this window. I'm just going to minimize it, and I'm going to run this calculation. And remember, I already put this two millimeter hole in here. So if if there's a rim thickness issue, I should see it, and there isn't. So everything calculates out. I look at my results. Uh, I have a torque of 114 and 152 RPM. If you remember, we needed to have 110 and 140. We've, we've actually exceeded those. Um, our service life is good. So now we have a gear design that's acceptable to the client, to the end user. We've exceeded the efficiency percent, and we have um, were able to press that on. <clears throat> if you want to see what this looks like, we can look at our 3D geometry. It'll calculate this out, and voila, KISSOFT provides you a, uh, a worm gear pair cross-axis. We defined what that uh, inner diameter was. We can even give an inner diameter for the worm gear itself, which would maybe we see 30. We update this calculation. Boom, there it is. Nice looking worm gear right there. That's how we do it. That was a simple uh, solution. We used a couple things here. We used, uh, we kind of decided uh, that we were going to look at deep tooth, prof uh, deep tooth forms. Uh, we, we calculated kind of a minimum ratio we thought we might need at that efficiency. We defined the, the materials, and we defined the rating method that we're going to use to calculate this. We used fine sizing then to dial this in and get a, a, a design that really met our needs. We have other videos on our kissoff.com uh, webpage. You can go to... Our webpage here, kissoffusa.com, and you can, there's lots of information here you can look at. Uh, you can go to our webpage, our uh, Kissoff USA channel on YouTube, and we have lots of other videos you can look at as well. I'm Ty Warner with Kissoff USA. If uh, you have any questions, feel free to contact us. We can uh, provide trial licenses, etc. I hope you've enjoyed this. This design example of a uh, cross-axis gear pair. If you have questions or would like to see other examples, go ahead and give me a call at 715-477-0828. Thanks for watching.